Learning from others will help you grow faster. And at least in the development space, what better way to improve as a developer and to make better apps than looking at how others are building their own applications. And luckily for us, because of open source and GitHub, we are able to see or have access to other people's codes for insane applications. And that is exactly what we're gonna be doing in this video. We're gonna go over three open source software as a service applications and a bonus one that will help you with your own applications. And with each project, we're gonna talk about what you can take out of it and how you can apply it into your own applications. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe and let's get into it. Now, the first open source application that I want to talk about was Room GPT. Now, this is an application that will help you redesign your room using AI. So let's say I have an image of a random room. Um, I could just drag it into this image uploader and then select the type of room or theme that I want to change it to. So for example, maybe I want the tropical sort of look to my room. Maybe I'm moving to Costa Rica, who knows? And I could just click render design like this and this will load. And as you can see, it redesigned the image we have here where it just turned it into more of a tropical look. And look, this is a really cool app and I think we can take a lot from it. The main thing you could probably learn from this is how to utilize AI to generate new things. And for this application, they are using the Replicate API, which is like an AI that allows you to generate images or text. And for those of you that are maybe working on an AI project, which is probably a decent amount nowadays, then you know, you could just take this, copy and paste it into your application, and there you go, you have a AI application. And you can also look into how they did this drag and drop image. I use like stuff like Cloudinary, but you can look into how they did theirs for specifically AI images. So really cool project. And I guess like, let's just say the main thing you can take out of this is AI API as well as image upload. And again, these are just at your disposal, so why not use it? Even though it may not be exactly what you want, just if it's in the same ball field, why not? Is it even ball field? I don't even know. Park, whatever. <laughs> if it's in the same ballpark, there we go. Then, you know, use this, okay? And this leads us to the second open source business that we can talk about, and it is Typebot. And essentially, if we log in, Typebot is an open source, of course, all the are open source, um, bot creator. And basically it's just a no code tool that allows you to build any sort of bot that you want. For example, if we go to start from a template, you can see these types of bots that we can create without code. For example, let's say we wanted to create a lead magnet. We could just use the template and design it how we see fit. And essentially we could just lead this AI into doing it what we want it to do with no code tools. For example, if we wanted to have an image, you know, we could just upload something like this and it's, it's quite easy. And you can see this is quite complicated. And if we just go into testing, we can just test it on the side. So you can see here, it's giving us questions. Now, most of us would probably not use this for app development, but rather put in, it into our own application. But regardless, you can learn a lot from this. And look, we can just talk to this like, like a normal AI chatbot. But as you can see, we're just walking through everything here. So you see hi there, it's going through all of these. And then once we respond with our name, they're responding with something else. And look, I'm not gonna act like I know exactly how this application was built through and through. And at least by reading the application a little bit, you can learn how such a complex app is built. And I know for the generality of us, which honestly, I don't even know what to call this community, um, if you have an idea of what we should call this community, then let me know. But for the most of us, we're going to build basic software as a service applications, stuff like a platform, a simple walkthrough of an application, something that does one or two features. But at least looking at how a complex app is made like Typebot and even just reading the documentation, my head was exploding because there's so many different variables that go into it. For example, you have to deal with the builder, the different features within that. You have to also deal with the AI API, creating the documentation, for example. I'm just reading through these, but all of these are like mini apps within their own. At least take different aspects of this and put into your own application if you have a similar app, but you can at least understand the complexities that go into these types of applications. Now, the third software as a service application that you can learn from is Lucid Icons. And look, you might be saying, Nizar, why on earth are you talking about Lucid React? Well, firstly, Lucid React is one of the most popular icon libraries, at least in the Next.js or React space. But also more importantly, is that this application was made for developers. And when you're making things for developers or for the sake of developing other things like an icon or a UI library, you have to make sure that all aspects of your application is 
perfect or at least no bugs at all. And just looking at how a library is made is always good. For example, right, Lucid had to make a guide on how to use this. They had to make a good documentation on how to install it and utilize it. They also had to make the icons. You know, it's cool to know these things because if you're gonna make stuff for developers or you're gonna wanna know how to do something in a good way, we have to know how to do it the right way. And if we head over to the icons here in the development space, you can see how they're making the icons. It's basically just an SVG. You can see over here, you have the SVG that is displayed as an icon. In addition, it's pretty cool to just know how icon libraries or at least any libraries made. I've talked about Shatian in the past, but this one is just really cool because it's a service that you're using for free and they had to make sure that it's good. Also, if you wanna know how search was made, you know, you can. Like this is an actual search functionality, which is actually coming soon. I mean, you might see the video that's coming out. It's gonna be very similar to this, where once you search for something like person, you want it to display all the people and it's coming here at the top, but uh, it's coming soon, don't worry. But regardless, this is a really cool library and what you'll get out of this is good principles and let's just say cool icons. I just personally like it because I like Lucid React, but it's a pretty cool one. And now a bonus one, a last open source project that you can learn from is my own platform. I'm not gonna plug it in and just say like, oh, you should you go use it and try it out. But I'm just gonna talk about it a little bit because it's open source and why not? Basically, it's a learning platform where you know I have a few free stuff you can, can do. And it's just an open source project that if you wanna learn how I developed it, then you can. All of it's over here. We have over 30, six stars, which is pretty cool. Essentially, it's just a basic project, a full stack application with Stripe payments, with different components, um, backend and database. So just a bunch of things that go into a full stack application that I think anyone could take away and learn from. And at least for those that are interested and want to learn how a full stack app looks like, or maybe get started on their own and want to contribute to an open source project, then this is an awesome one. You know, if you go to one of these, you can see we have different aspects and dynamic routing. Um, even when you go to the actual free stuff, you can see we have a progress bar for those that are logged in and different chapters. So really cool stuff for those that are interested in learning how that's made. And yeah, these are the four open source software as a service applications that I personally am learning from, excluding this one, but you know, still learning from that. If you want to join the developer Discord group, I will leave that down below. We're at a thousand people now, which is just amazing. And also don't forget to comment a community name idea. I'm thinking something funny like Nizzy's. I don't know why that's pretty funny, but um, I'm trying to think of a community name because I think it would just be cool to have. But yeah, happy coding and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.